so last class we started to do uh, explaining that what is the disjoining pressure, what is the value of the disjoining pressure and if a certain liquid actually weights a particular solid wall, what are the different regimes. So, if you recall this particular part of the presentation, what we had was that there was a liquid which weighted a wall over here, this is the wall okay. and this is basically after this the liquid basically continues. So, it is like a it is like a weighting, it is like completely weights the surface, it is like an extended meniscus. So, up to this region from this region onwards it is called the thin film region. Okay. So, thin film region we already established what the thin film region is that what is the magnitude of the thickness of the film thickness that is needed. So, uh, this is the thin film region. Now, in the thin film region there exists a non evaporating equilibrium thin film region where the wall temperature is the same as the liquid temperature. Okay. Then there is a microfilm region okay, where both the capillary pressure as well as the disjoining pressure plays a major role. Okay. Here the film temperature is greater than the saturation temperature, but lower than the wall temperature. So, this is called the microfilm region. Here the flow is basically uh, driven by both capillary as well as by the disjoining pressure. Okay. And so, it is driven by the curvature as well as by the disjoining pressure that is what we wrote. Okay. Then there is a transition region basically and then there is a thick film region which is the meniscus region where the temperature of the film is the same as the saturation temperature. Okay. And here because of the large thickness of the film okay, uh, the disjoining pressure does not play much of a role. Okay. And we also establish the fact that as the thickness of the film goes up the disjoining pressure effect comes down. And if you recall this graph over here you can easily see that when the film thickness is about 5000 nanometer which is 5 microns okay, the human hair is about 100 micron. So, it is basically one, uh, one fifth of the rather 1 by 20th of a human hair. Okay. So, that is the thickness that we are talking about when the thickness of the film is like that the disjoining pressure is basically practically equal to 0 that means it is virtually negligible. Okay. So, in the microfilm region most of the evaporation actually takes place it is ideally suited for that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but in another case okay, the another interesting question that that pops up while we are doing this analysis is that what is the nature of the saturation vapor pressure over a curved interface. Right. So, this is a curved interface that what we see over here right. What is the saturation pressure looks like? Okay. How is it influenced? Okay. So, let us look at that in details. Okay. So, let us uh, look at the, the journal part now. Okay. Now, in the thin film region So, our question that we are going to answer is that what is the nature of the saturation pressure right, how the saturation pressure is changed across the interface, whether there is a suppression of the saturation pressure or not. Okay. So, my initial statement will be the disjoining pressure and the capillary effect okay, reduce, reduce the saturation pressure saturation pressure okay compared to to normal conditions conditions okay this is a statement and we are going to prove this particular statement right so, what we are saying is that both the disjoining pressure and the capillary pressure has an effect on the saturation pressure right. Okay. Now, the thin film region, the thin film region we are only talking about the thin film region over here delta okay. the liquid interface temperature. the liquid interface temperature okay, is T delta right. 
So, the normal saturation vapor pressure will be normal saturation okay, vapor pressure will be pressure will be P sat whatever is the saturation pressure correspond to that corresponding to that temperature and you can almost look it up from the thermodynamic table right. You know the temperature you can find out what is the corresponding saturation pressure. So, we are stating that the liquid interface temperature is T uh, delta and the corresponding saturation pressure is P sat T delta okay. and we are going to say that whether this pressure okay, the actual saturation pressure whether it is different from this or not. Okay. So, uh, recall if you do a little bit of recall of your thermodynamics. Okay. At equilibrium, remember we are only talking about equilibrium over here, we are not talking about a receding or an advancing liquid front, okay. we are not talking about that mu L is the same as mu V, right? that is what we proved earlier, got it okay. at equilibrium. right? So, the chemical potential of the liquid and the vapor phases should be the same. Now, integrating the Gibbs equation okay, which is basically nothing but this and we integrate it at constant temperature got it. Okay. So, this is the Gibbs equation okay. once you integrate it at the constant temperature this term basically vanishes right because it is a constant temperature integration. So, it is mu minus mu sat is equal to P sat at whatever the delta is to P V d P correct. So, the, this is basically uh, the mu minus mu sat when integrated okay, that is basically integrating this term you get P sat to P okay, this is the arbitrary limit of integration. Okay. Now, there are two other things that we would like to mention one is that your V b that is the specific volume right of the vapor phase is given by R g sorry. R g T delta divided by uh, the corresponding P v correct. Okay. Now, that is the volume of the vapor phase right. V L on the other hand is equal to V okay, for the liquid phase assuming that the liquid is incompressible got it. Okay. So, now we can write basically two sets of equations for the liquid and the vapor. So, the mu of the vapor phase okay, at delta is equal to mu sat at del at sorry mu sat V plus R g T delta L n P V delta divided by P sat T delta got it that is the first set. Hmm. Okay. Now, the second set mu L into delta is equal to mu sat L plus V L P L minus P sat T delta got it these are the two sets of equations right. In one case V L is incompressible, so it is constant in the other case it is not. So, we are integrating it right. If you have not understood it let us go through it once again. So, mu minus mu this is a common equation right. Okay. So, this integral is a common equation. Now, the vapor volume as you can see is a function of the vapor pressure correct that comes from the. Uh, uh, so, this particular equation is well known right. On the other hand for the liquid phase okay, we are assuming it is incompressible. So, it is basically a constant. Okay. So, you integrate this equation one for the liquid phase and one for the vapor phase. Once you do that okay, you get two sets one is for the vapor 
okay, where you have a change in that volume right. The volume has been substituted by the corresponding pressure form and in the other case you get it just simple in terms of V L because V L is constant you can take it out okay. So, it is a very simple integration. Hmm. So, now so you have now two sets of equations over here okay. Now let us try to do a combination of the two now. So, it is P sat T delta into exponential V L P L minus P sat T delta divided by R delta T delta. Got it? When you combine the two forms that is what you get okay. So, so the pressure difference now in the liquid and the vapor phase okay can also be given as right because this is the capillary pressure this is the disjoining pressure. Capillary pressure comes from the curvature effects that is as we said for a flat interface this should have been the same right whereas the disjoining pressure comes because of the thinness of the liquid film got it. So, using these equations we eliminate P L okay. So, once you eliminate P L so what you get is P sat T delta and you can work out the math the details the algebra part that is P D got it ok. So, that is the net expression that you get ok. Now, if the interface is flat ok and thick. So, the interface can be both flat and thick right. So, it is like you have a uh, you have a bucket full of water that is like a typical interface which is very thick right ok. So, in that particular case when the interface is thick you get P D is equal to 0 right. If P D is equal to 0 only if it is a thick interface, but it is not necessarily flat you get P V delta is equal to P sat T delta and you have the expression which is basically P V delta minus P sat T delta minus P cap ok divided by rho L R G T delta got it ok. So, there is a reduction and when the interface is flat you know that uh, all the terms basically vanishes ok. When the interface is flat and thick you basically have your P delta is the same as your saturation pressure ok when both of these things happens right. So, in general what you see is that the vapor pressure saturation vapor pressure at the interface is actually lowered compared to the P sat right. So, what we can say over here is that there is a reduction reduction in saturated vapor pressure vapor pressure compared to P sat right. So, compared to P sat ok there is a reduction this is P sat ok compared to P sat there is a reduction in the saturation vapor pressure got it ok because of this factor that sits here right. So, what does the curvature do? The curvature if there is a, a, a disjoining pressure and a capillary pressure there is a definite reduction of the saturation pressure near the interface. Even if there is no uh, disjoining pressure there is a reduction in saturation pressure at the interface because of the normal curvature and if the interface is however flat you however recover the old form that means your saturation pressure and your your normal saturation pressure which is given by this is the same as the saturation pressure across the on the other side of the interface right ok. So, here therefore, in this particular part of this particular lecture what we have done is that we have covered that how the interface actually 
what will be the pressure difference across the interface right. And we also know now which part of the interface should evaporate, which part of the interface should not evaporate, which will be what kind of a curvature will actually govern the flow and we have defined a very interesting quantity which is the disjoining pressure over here. So, take away from this particular section is P d and P cap okay. and these are very very important in many many applications okay, especially for thin film dynamics okay. when you do materials processing also like for example, polymers thin polymer films okay, you would have a lot of uh, role of the disjoining pressure over there. Okay. We have not gone into the intermolecular perspective if except giving an idea that this is governed by the Leonard Jones potential 612 potential or you can adapt a form like that. But apart from that we have not gone into the details of working out, okay. but we have said it arises out of the dispersive as well as the electrostatic forces. Right? But that is not needed also because this is not a full fledged statistical mechanics class, okay. but what we have done over here is to provide you with an overview that how to attack okay, a problem like this where you can have an effect of the disjoining pressure. Okay. Now, having done this let us look at some of the interesting uh, conservation laws that we wrote earlier. Right? We wrote this con uh, conservation laws in terms of if you recall uh, sorry. If you recall the interfacial heat and mass transfer uh, lecture right what did we do over there in the interfacial heat and mass transfer lecture we did not include the effect of surface tension and disjoining pressure effects right when we actually did it when we wrote the interfacial equations right so let us now include those things over here okay because once you include those things now you can have a holistic view right of the interface so let us look at the mass balance first and i won't go through the details of the math i will just write down the basic equations right at the liquid vapor interface right once i write it you will recall that what i wrote earlier the mass balance is given by okay do you recall this particular form V L minus V i right dot n right okay. that is the interface that is the reference speed of the interface to rho V V b minus V i dot n. Okay. This is the mass flux at interface due to phase change you recall okay. V i this is just to recap V i was the interface velocity right. Okay. Now, this is the normal component of the velocity this is the first tangent this is basically the second tangent because you know it is a 3 D interface interfaces are normally 3D right, it is a 3D interface. So, basically you need one normal and two tangents right to define it got it. Okay. So, now the mass balance therefore, write it rho L V L n minus V i n equal to rho V V b n minus V i Okay. So, that is what we have for the in terms of the mass balance and we have included the 3D nature of the interface over here right okay. by combining all these terms okay. that is a mass term. So, now let us look at the momentum balance. So, the momentum balance Okay. So, the momentum balance if we start writing out the momentum balance. Now, the momentum balance uh, that actually includes all the surface tension forces right because it should come from the momentum balance over here right. Okay. Now, 
uh, normal momentum balance will be something like this. It is very similar to the mass balance right except now there is a change of momentum is equal to the forces. Okay. Now, let us include this we knew already let us add the two effects surface tension and P d effects. Okay. So, this gets added to the left hand side of this equation to this side of this equation. So, what do we have? tau L minus tau V prime dot N plus sigma T. If you recall already that sigma T was responsible for that Marangoni flow and related things. So, this is like R i plus 1 by R 2 and minus P d into N. Okay, P d being the disjoint. I will go across to each and every term over here d sigma by d t this is where the Marangoni stress term comes into the picture V L minus V B. Okay. Now, let us look term by term this is basically nothing but the stress tensor right this is a stress tensor we all know this. Okay. This is basically nothing but the capillary pressure which we covered right the capillary pressure right this is basically the disjoining pressure only happens for thin film correct. Okay. This is basically what we call the Marangoni stress because you have this gradient right d sigma by d t. Okay. So, you have a Marangoni stress okay. if there is a temperature variation right and this is basically the momentum transfer momentum transfer due to inertia. right right so as you can see when there was no if the interface is flat say for example absolutely flat interface this term will go off to zero correct the second term second term will go off to, this will only come when there is a curvature right if there is no curvature why should the term actually be retained if the film is very thick the disjoining pressure will go if there is no temperature variation right Okay, this term will also go. So, we would go back to our original formulation across the interface. right? So, if it is a straight flat interface and thick one right? Okay, if this is thick okay, then of course, your equation boils down to basically that right. Moment you have a curvy kind of an interface right, you actually are including this term into the picture if there is a temperature variation from here to here okay say that can happen because say you have a heater okay you have a differential heat flux say the temperature is increasing or you are supplying heat to this substrate in this particular fashion right what will happen the surface temperature will also start to vary right because of that you will have actually have a variation of the marangoni stress right across the interface that needs to be accommodated over here right okay and if this film is very thin that means if this delta now becomes much much less than say 10 nanometer or 100 nanometer then you actually bring this term into the picture right okay so the momentum equation now basically boils down to this particular these three additional terms all of which comes from the curvature temperature uh, gradient right as well as the disjoining pressure all of which we covered in the previous lectures to give you guys an idea of what it is right. Okay. Now, this T of course, can be T 1 okay, and T 2. So, that that is the two tangents. Okay. Now, this tau prime any tau prime can be written as the pressure plus the 2 D sorry. minus two third not all of these terms are retained into the corresponding i okay in in many of the cases so this is the general form of the stress tensor right this we already know from your navier stokes equation and what not right so uh, in many cases m triple dot prime this one okay is not high it is not high 
right. That means the other way of saying is that, that there is no evaporation or condensation or whatever it is that they are, you are talking about ok. So, no substantial I would say evaporation never stops right, no substantial evaporation or condensation got it ok. No normal evaporation or condensation in that case what will happen is that your m triple dot V L minus V B this particular term will be equal to 0 right if that is the case corollary of this right. If the liquid and the vapor phases are inviscid say for example right. So, if liquid and vapor phases vapor phases are inviscid it can be inviscid right. In that particular case what will happen is a tau L equal to tau V equal to will be equal to 0 right, there is no viscous shear right ok. So, in that particular case the momentum at the interface reduces to ok P V minus P L sigma T 1 by R i plus 1 by R 2 minus sorry P d right. This is we are very familiar with this is that capillary pressure form right ok. So, in most of the cases you get away using this because in many of the books you will find that this is what they, they write that across the interface this is the momentum balance right. This is not exactly always true if there is evaporation ok you have to include the evaporation term that is mandatory right. If there is viscous stress you have to include the viscous stress at the interface, but in many cases this may be considered negligible ok compared to the uh, curvature effects that we have here ok. So, this is basically what we call the revised momentum equation got it ok. In most of the cases this would be kind of valid ok. Now, uh, the, the follow up will be in the next uh, uh, we will start with the energy equation. So, the energy equation and we will see how the energy equation actually varies over the interface because we have done mass, we have done momentum, we have shown how surface tension and uh, the disjoining pressure enters into the picture, how Marangoni stress enters into the picture. Now, we will do the energy and then correspondingly do the species right, because these are the other two uh, snippets right, where we actually have to include these effects over there ok. So, that we will do in the next lecture ok, uh, which follows ok. Thank you.